A lot of roll and write games that come with specific pads are perishable in the sense that the more you play, the fewer sheets you have and then the game slowly disappears. Honeymoon is one in a line of games by NSV uh, Games that has been published and it is a roll and write game that embraces perishability. The game will basically disappear as you play it. It doesn't uh, shy away from it. Starting from the container it comes with, which is a single piece of paper folded into a pouch and then stitched together so that the only way to open the game is to rip the pouch and of course that means that it makes it really not all that suitable for storage you will want to you will want to place the pouch inside a plastic bag probably inside the bag you find a single sheet of paper which is the rule sheet a die, very generic die, a small pencil, and then also a pad of, of, of play sheets, which is, well, the game. Uh, you have about 50 and I already used several, so this is getting thinner and thinner. Each sheet is double-sided, so it has two different versions of the board. You will give one to each player, you need to make sure that everybody's playing with the same side up, A or B. And also probably you want to give a writing uh, instrument to each player so they don't all have to share. The purpose is, this is the moon, clearly. In this version, this fantasy version, it's a moon that is full of sweets uh, such as chocolate, marshmallow, candies, honey, hence the title Honeymoon, and some pickles. Clearly this is fantasy because we all know that the moon in truth is made of cheese. But other than that, maybe one day they will have a more scientifically accurate sequel. So everybody has their own play sheet. Everybody ideally has a writing instrument. And then somebody rolls the die. The same die is rolled for everybody. So you roll the die, you announce the result, and everybody will use the same number. Which is great because it means everybody's playing at the same time, simultaneously, no downtime. And also, uh, you can blame luck because everybody has exactly the same results and starts from the same, from the same position. Now, when you roll the die, everybody will have to cross out that number of spaces, three in this case, on their play sheet. And we are digging tunnels trying to get to the suites. We cannot uh, we cannot cross off areas with those chunks. We can now dig there and we're gonna try to avoid pickles. When you start the game, you have to start from the surface. And so for example, I decide to cross out these three spaces, one, two, and three, which means I collected a marshmallow and so I also mark that. And then it's my turn and then we roll the die again and we got a four. Several things are important here. First, you must add the number exactly. You cannot add less. If you cannot add it exactly to your board, then simply you, pay, you pass, you skip that turn. Your tunnels have to branch out from previous tunnels or from the surface and you cannot cross tunnels that you created before also they cannot be adjacent next to one another so I could not do one two three four because that would be adjacent to that one I guess the tunnel is too large or a friend is gonna uh, implode or something like that I suppose I do one two three and four like so which doesn't give me anything this time but I'm hoping to get that candy next time. One, two, three, like so, and maybe a later turn, a six. I say six can be tricky to place. Maybe here, one, two, three, four, five, six, which gives me, unfortunately, a pickle, but also two chocolates. I hope I'm doing it right. I'm not counting too accurately because I'm just giving you an example. This is a general idea. Now, um, there are two versions of the game. The version that I'm showing you, which is the one that we usually play, once you start the initial tunnel, that's it. Your further tunnels have to branch out from that tunnel and then from other further tunnels. In the standard or beginner's version, every time that you add a new tunnel, it will start from a previous tunnel branching out or 
from somewhere else in the surface. So for example, if you roll the four in the center game, I could just start it from here or here or anywhere really. So you can start from the surface as many times as you want. I don't find that, you know, challenging enough for, for my taste. My eight year old likes this version also. So this is the general idea. It has to be in a straight line, don't cross, don't put them next to each other, etc, etc, etc. So you'll be filling out all of these uh, boxes here. Now, important, when you have filled out, when somebody has filled out the first column entirely, you start the timer. You announce, oh, I filled out the first column entirely. You start the timer. Everybody makes some more than now. The timer has started, so the end of the game is approaching. From that moment on, every time that a four or more is rolled, everybody makes a mark on one of these three spaces here. When all the three spaces have been crossed, the game is over. At the point, you score points. For each kind of candy, you score based on the score indicated on the rightmost space of that line. So for honey, I score six points. Chocolate one, cho um, this thing one, marshmallow one, and I get three points for candy. So that's the points that you score for the lines. Then each complete column, each complete set gives you five points. Each pickle loses you two points. Add all the points together and the highest total wins the game. One thing that I realize now I neglected to tell you, but it's important when a one is rolled, then you can choose to add any amount between one and seven. Say, the one is kind of like a wild, but with a limited amount of wildness, because say I want to add a three, I want to count the one as a three, then I fill in three of these bubbles, I add my three tunnels somewhere, with the usual thingies, but that means that the next time a one is rolled, I cannot add more than four. And if I have used all of my resources for the ones and a one is rolled, then I have to pass. I skip my turn because nothing, there's nothing I can do with a one. The one does not give you a free one, gives you a chance of spending bubbles from that line. So this is how you play Honeymoon. It's really really enjoyable i was so pleasantly surprised a game that is so flimsy is almost like made of nothing and it really tells you when you have a good idea and is well implemented uh game design can just surprise you that way this is a filler for sure that you play in about 10 minutes sometimes less sometimes more if somebody just wants to drill as fast as possible especially in the basic version and just Fill it, just fill out one column and end the game early. You can do it, so ending the game early is five minutes, maybe instead of 10. Definitely a filler, but such an enjoyable one, such an addictive one. You immediately wanna uh, play the other version and then you wanna use another play sheet and so on and so forth. I played this game with my eight-year-old daughter, with my 10-year-old daughter. These are my main playmates these days because uh, because we're still in quarantine, I don't have game nights with adult friends. But I could definitely have said this one working as a light filler even with adult friends. You know, when we're waiting for other friends uh, to show up before we play something big and heavy. This is just a very pleasant, very nice and enjoyable filler. And especially if you play the version when where you cannot start from the surface anytime you want, you have to branch out. Then it turns into a really nice little puzzle because you're trying to score sets up you're trying to uh, not to, to, to build up, to set up a possible future opportunity to score while at the same time, try not to get stuck. You're trying to look out if, okay, if there's an option to have a tunnel number four, tunnel number three, tunnel number five, then tunnel number two, then I'm sure they have good chances the next roll will give me something good. So for a game this simple, for a game this small, it's a really remarkable and surprising game that has a couple of really interesting wrinkles about the timing, which is when you're gonna trigger the end of the game. Uh, again, maybe ideally I wanna prepare a lot of lines, keeping one empty here so I don't trigger the end of the game. When I trigger the end of the game, then I set up things in a way that I'm gonna try to, to get as many of those full sets as possible. So many options when it comes to 
dealing with your map, digging in different configurations, choosing what to score, and again, also trying to figure out where everybody else is at and trying to see, uh, to manipulate the length of the game to, uh, to your advantage. I was so pleasantly surprised. Yes, it's not a game that I'll be able to play forever because it's so perishable. I think it's like the perfect game that you that you can go uh, bring when you go camping. You play in front of the fire, you play it, and, and the game visibly disappears before your very eyes. You feed the old sheets to the flames. When you're done, you also feed this thing, which is kind of useless anyways. What are you gonna do with the rule sheet? Also, that goes. Then you're left with what? With with a little pencil, which you can use for something else. The die that can be added as a spare to another to another game. And so that's it. You're left uh, with the memories, with the beautiful memories of having a good time playing the game with your friends and with uh, and with your family. So it's almost like a zen, almost like a spiritual experience. The game transcends its own materiality, and that's and that is my assessment of Honeymoon, a perishable game that disappears as you play, but a pretty good game, pretty solid.